Welcome to the Sci-Fi Cosmic Conquest Channel. We use the latest AI technology to bring your imagination to life through glorious sci-fi stories. Join us on journeys to the far reaches of the universe and witness the survival of humanity. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Sin's mission was clear. Infiltrate the Emperor's Palace on Valoria, eliminate the corrupt commanders responsible for atrocities against their own people, and dismantle the chain of command that fueled the Civil War. Earth Command had chosen Sin for this task, not just for his combat prowess. The Story of Sin Part 4 Shadows of War In the vast emptiness of space, stars flickered like the dying embers of cosmic fire each one a silent witness to the turmoil that churned among the inhabited planets below. On the fringes of the galaxy, the planet Valoria, a world of stormy skies and towering cities, was suffocating under the weight of civil war. It was here that Major Samuel Nelson, known only as Sin to a select few, floated in the shadow of a nebula, his ship invisible against the backdrop of deep space. Sin was no ordinary soldier. His body, a tapestry of flesh interwoven with the finest strands of synthetic technology was both his greatest weapon and his heaviest burden. Equipped with an arsenal of advanced weaponry, from cloaking devices to power missiles and combat drones, he was a phantom on the battlefield, a ghost whose very existence was deniable by those who commanded him. The mission was clear infiltrate the Emperor's palace on Valoria, eliminate the corrupt commanders responsible for atrocities against their own people, and dismantle the chain of command that fueled the civil war. Earth Command had chosen Sin for this task not just for his combat prowess, but for his ability to blend in, to become a shadow among shadow among shadows in a world where loyalty was often bought with blood. Chapter 1 The Arrival Valoria's atmosphere greeted Sin with a tempest. His descent was a ballet of lightning and thunder, his ship slicing through the clouds with the precision of a well-aimed dagger. As he landed on the outskirts of the capital city, the rain matted his hair against his skull, droplets cascading down the angular features of his face features that had been chosen from a catalogue of genetically ideal traits designed to be both intimidating and forgettable. Major Nelson, are you ready to proceed? asked Athena, the AI integrated within his neural network, her voice a calming presence in his mind. Initiate stealth protocol, Athena. It's time we disappeared, Sin replied, his voice a low growl lost in the roar of the storm. As he activated his cloaking device, his form blurred into the rain-soaked environment, a specter moving toward the heart of the city. His target tonight was not the Emperor but a mid-level commander known for orchestrating mass executions in the city square. Navigating through the dark alleys and over the slick rooftops, Sin reached the commander's residence a fortress masquerading as a mansion. Security drones patrolled the perimeter, their sensors sweeping the night for any sign of disturbance. Athena, deploy countermeasures Sin commanded quietly. Deploying now, she confirmed. Within seconds, the area was buzzing with electronic interference, the drones crashing to the ground as their systems overloaded. Sin entered the mansion through a side entrance, neutralizing guards with non-lethal precision. His movements were a whisper, his attacks a sigh. In the commander's study, the man sat alone, poring over battle plans that would never come to fruition. Without a word, Sin dispatched him, a single shot to the head from his silenced pistol. As he left the way he came, the storm abated, leaving only the gentle patter of rain on the blood-stained windows of the mansion. Chapter 2 The Emperor's Shadow with the first commander eliminated, Sin's presence in Valoria grew like a dark legend among the ranks of the Emperor's Guard. His prowess on the battlefield against the rebel forces earned him commendations and, soon, an offer to join the Emperor's Royal Guard an honor and an opportunity. As a member of the Guard, Sin had access to the palace, a sprawling complex of elegance built on the suffering of the populace. He walked its hallowed halls in the guise of loyalty all the while gathering intel on his next targets. Each corrupt officer who fell by his hand brought the mission closer to completion, but also drew more attention to the mysterious new hero in the ranks. Athena, analyze the Emperor's schedule. We need to know when he's most vulnerable sin whispered during one of his nightly patrols through the palace gardens. Processing now. Be cautious, Major. 
The security protocols are increasingly sophisticated here, Athena advised. It was during one such vulnerable moment when the emperor attended a secluded garden party that Sin found his chance. Among the guests was a general whose hands were stained with more blood than the rest of the command combined. As the general retired to a private alcove, Sin followed, a shadow among the night's darker shades. The confrontation was brief. The general, a burly man with a gaze as sharp as his mind, sensed his approach. Who are you, he demanded, reaching for his sidearm. Sin responded not with words but with action, disarming the general and using his own weapon against him. Just as Sin finally spoke, as the general slumped to the ground, another ghost in a war full of specters. Chapter 3 The Heart of Darkness With each passing day, the weight of his actions grew heavier on Sin's shoulders. The palace was a labyrinth of secrets and lies, each corner turned revealing deeper layers of corruption. The emperor himself was a puppet, tangled in strings held by unseen hands. Athena, it's time to cut the strings. Prepare for the final phase Sin decided after a long night of contemplation. The last target was the emperor himself, but not for assassination. He needed to be exposed, shown to be the figurehead he was, to crumble the pillars of corruption from the top down. The day of reckoning came with the dawn. Sin approached the emperor during a public assembly, the crowd a sea of faces hungry for change. As he stepped forward, his cloaking device deactivated, revealing his true form for the first time to the public. Emperor Sin began, his voice amplified by the silent attention of the crowd, your reign of terror ends today. What followed was not an assassination but an arrest. Sin, with the backing of a small faction of the royal guard he had turned to the cause, detained the emperor. Evidence of his puppetry and the true extent of the regime's corruption was broadcast for all to see. Chapter 4 New Dawn The aftermath was chaotic. The empire crumbled, but from its ashes rose the promise of a new beginning. The people of Valoria, once oppressed and divided, united to forge a future of their own making. Sin, his mission completed, prepared to leave the planet, his identity still a secret to all but a few. Athena set a course for home. Our work here is done, he said, looking back at the planet one last time. Or set major. What will we do when we return, Athena asked, her voice a hint of curiosity in the vastness of space. We wait, we watch. And we're ready to protect what needs to be saved, Sin answered, his gaze fixed on the stars. As his ship disappeared into the fold of space, the legend of the ghost who had walked through the empire and dismantled it from within continued to grow, a tale of justice, a whisper of hope in a universe that needed it more than ever. This story of Sin, the AI-assisted assassin, immerses the reader in a world of espionage, tactical combat, and moral dilemmas, capturing the essence of a futuristic epic where the line between man and machine blurs in the pursuit of righteousness. Chapter 5 the invitation to govern. After Valoria's turbulent rebirth, the capital shimmered with both the scars of battle and the promise of renewal. As the dust settled, the newly formed government sought to harness the respect and influence Major Samuel Nelson known to the world as Sin had cultivated. Although reluctant to engage in politics, Sin understood his pivotal role in ensuring a stable transition. The invitation came on a clear evening as the twin suns set, casting a golden hue over the city's rebuilt skyline. Three representatives from the transitional government, diverse in age and background, met Sin at his temporary quarters, a modest structure overlooking the city's central plaza. Major Nelson, your actions have not only saved countless lives, but have inspired a wave of hope across Valoria, began Jora Lynn, a young diplomat whose energy reflected her commitment to peace. We need that hope to guide us now in forming a government that truly represents Valoria's people. Sin, his stance firm yet open, listened intently. My expertise lies in the field, not the council chamber, he responded, his voice even but warm. However, I am committed to supporting Valoria's path to stability. The discussion delved into possible roles Sin could play advisor, security consultant, even a figurehead to bridge the military and civilian divide. As the night deepened, they reached a consensus Sin would serve as a special advisor on security and defense, 
a non-political role that would utilize his strategic acumen without miring him in political maneuvering. As the representatives departed, Sin stood on the balcony, looking out over the city. Athena, let's prepare. If Valoria is to find peace, we must be vigilant. Chapter 6 The Undercurrents of Discontent In the weeks following his appointment, Sin dove into his advisory role with a calculated dedication. His days were spent reviewing security protocols, assessing threats, and training the new Valorian security forces. However, beneath the surface of rebuilding and reform, a current of discontent stirred. Rumors of a splinter faction discontented with the new democratic trajectory began to surface. Composed of former military elites and hardline nationalists, the group viewed the inclusive government as a threat to Valoria's traditional power structures. Using a network of informants and leveraging Athena's advanced surveillance capabilities, Sin began to piece together the faction's movements and plans. Their rhetoric was fiery, their meetings clandestine, and their intentions increasingly clear they planned to disrupt the upcoming Founding Day celebrations, a symbolic event meant to solidify the new era of governance. As Sin monitored the faction, he implemented subtle security enhancements around the celebration venue, fortified the communication networks, and prepared contingency plans. The weight of potential conflict hung heavily in the air, a stark contrast to the public face of festivity as Founding Day approached. Chapter 7 Founding Day Foiled Plot Founding Day dawned with pomp and circumstance. Flags adorned every corner of the capital, and citizens donned traditional garb in a vibrant display of national pride. Security was tight, but unobtrusive since handiwork evident in the discreet placement of guards and surveillance drones. As the celebrations reached their crescendo, with speeches about unity and progress echoing through the crowds, Athena's alert tone cut sharply through Sin's focused observation. Threat detected. North Quadrant, near the ceremonial days. Sin's reaction was immediate and fluid. He navigated through the crowd with a blend of grace and urgency, his eyes locked on the coordinates provided by Athena. There, concealed behind a group of revelers, stood a young man, his hand shaking as it gripped a concealed disruptor. Intercepting the would-be assassin with seconds to spare, Sin used a combination of disarmament techniques and verbal de-escalation. Think about what peace really means, he urged the young man as he secured the weapon. This isn't the way. The crisis averted, the crowd remained blissfully unaware, the celebrations continuing unabated. Sin handed the subdued assailant over to the security forces, his eyes meeting those of the young man one last time, a silent exchange of regret and understanding. Chapter 8 Reflecting on Peace In the aftermath of Founding Day, Sin's intervention became a topic of closed-door discussions among the government. His action had prevented a potential tragedy, but it also highlighted the fragile state of peace. Addressing the governing council, Sin emphasized the need for vigilance. We've seen today that peace is more than declarations and celebrations. It requires the continuous effort of every Valorian and a commitment to addressing the grievances that lead to such acts of desperation. Proposing the establishment of an intelligence and security bureau, Sin outlined a vision for a transparent, accountable organization that would not only protect but also preserve the principles of the new Valoria. The Council, recognizing the wisdom in his words, agreed to the proposal, appointing Sin as an overseer to ensure the Bureau's integrity without giving him direct control of balance that allowed him to remain a guardian of peace. Chapter 9 A New Journey Begins Years later, Valoria had not only stabilized but flourished. The Intelligence Bureau had become a model of effective security practices, balancing civil liberties with protective measures. Sin, now a revered figure whose legend had grown beyond his deeds, felt a sense of completion. As he stood watching over the city from the same balcony where he had once deliberated his role, Athena's voice brought him back to the present. Major Earth Command has requested your expertise on a new mission. Turning from the view, his silhouette blending with the twilight, Sin felt the familiar stir of duty. Then we prepare to leave, Athena. Our journey continues. His ship, a sleek vessel designed for both stealth and speed, lifted off from Valoria, leaving behind a world forever changed by his presence. Ahead lay the stars, countless new challenges, 
and the unyielding call of his duty to protect humanity wherever it led him.